Welcome to the iPad Possibilities Podcast, episode number 55, Weekly Thought, 3 Million iPads. Welcome to another episode of the iPad Possibilities Podcast. I'm Tim and I host this show every week, three times a week, and this is my weekly thought episode uh, where I get to share a few minutes with you on some just thoughts I have regarding the iPad. And I've got a lot of just different things I've been experimenting with and using this week that I wanted to share with you as well as some news. So first off, some announcements that kind of kick off the show. So uh, the Possibilities Network is a very long URL name. So I've switched it over. I've, I've been transferring over and it's complete. Uh, the Possibilities Network.com is now tppn.tv. So you can go there for the Possibilities Network. And as a part of that, I'm launching and restarting a bunch of shows that I put on hold for whatever reason. And I finally got the schedule out and got the passion back to do all of those different shows. So I'm now doing around nine shows or so every week. And you can check out all of those at the possible at tpbn.tv. And that stands for the Postulates Production Network. And you'll find new episodes starting next week, every day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, ex- uh, no show Sunday, but you'll find new episodes every day of the week. In three days of the week will be the iPad Possibilities Podcast. And I've got a bunch of other shows to check out there, the Possibilities Podcast, the Internet Possibilities Podcast, the Wireless Possibilities Podcast. Uh, all sorts of great shows, and I'd love to hear feedback as far as what shows you'd want to see more of, uh, some new new shows you'd like to see me start, and I'm looking into starting two other shows as well. So lots of things going on, and I'm also looking for a sponsor for the iPad Possibly Podcast. So for this show, if there's a business owner out there, if there's some company out there that would like to sponsor this podcast, I'm looking for a sole sponsor to fund this show. So if you're out there listening, I'd love to talk to you about sponsoring this podcast. So with that said, let's get on to some of the news that has been happening recently. So a big piece of news is that Apple announced within 80 days of April 3rd of the launch of the iPad, they sold 3 million iPads. So 3 million iPads in 80 days. That is simply, it's incredible. I I can't put another word on it. It took the iPhone such a long time that reached that number in the iPad. It's already reached. It's, It's just blowing by it. They can't keep up with demand. Apple retail stores are still out of stock because they just fly off the shelves once they get in stock. It's, it's, it's an amazing scenario of what's happened recently with the iPad launch. And, you know, it takes 7 to 10 days to ship the iPad out if you go on the online route from Apple.com. And uh, it just blows my mind how popular this device really is. It's something that people have wanted apparently for a long time and now that it's out, people are just buying them to no end. It, it's going to be the most popular computer I feel in within a few years here. It'll be the most widespread computer out there. Anyone will have it. And this is going to create uh, a huge marketplace for apps and different people to market hardware pieces and cases to go along with it. It's going to be huge, and it's an exciting time to be an iPad user as more and more people get them, and we get to share the joy with those that are new iPad users. So if you're a new iPad user, one of those three million, welcome, and it's uh, going to be a lot of fun as we have new apps come out. I've heard OmniFocus is on June 30th going to be submitted to Apple, so very soon here we'll have productivity as the way I like it with OmniFocus, so that's coming very soon, and Another kind of bit of news is that camera connection kit seems to get more and more popular as time goes by. It went from three to four week delivery time to now four to six weeks to get your hands on that camera connection kit from Apple.com. It's insane. Four to six weeks. That's just nuts. It's a full month at least over a month to have Apple ship you out those dongles, those camera connection kits. 
they are just flying off the shelves. I'm glad I got mine at the store when they first came out. It's uh, pretty incredible what they've managed to do with this accessory. It's an accessory that literally opens the iPad up to a creativity tool. So you can import video, photos, or import you know audio from microphones. And it's just a phenomenal tool that turns the iPad into a creation tool, a productivity tool. So it's an incredible dongle, incredible device that helps people be more productive on the iPad itself. So I'd recommend picking one up if you can find them. They are hard to get these days. So camera connection kit, four to six weeks. That just blew my mind how popular it really is. So with that said, let's go on to some different pieces of experiences I've had this week. So, uh, one experience I've had is installing InfiniDoc on my iPad. I've been using InfiniBoard for some time, and that basically adds to your jailbroken iPad endless boards and screens of apps. So you can go vertical as well as horizontally on your iPad. So, InfiniDoc does the same thing with your dock. You now have unlimited amounts of docks on your iPad. So I now have docs for my standard apps, I have music docs, I have all sorts of docs I can just scroll through. It's incredibly stable, it works great, and it's 99 cents in Cydia, and I just have to say I've been very impressed. I feel it's even better on the iPad than it is the iPhone. It's a great app, and you're able to customize it so you can have like 9 or 10 apps in your board. So you might not even have to scroll as much. So. InfiniBoard has been just something I've been using this week, and it's been fantastic. And these are the kind of apps that tell me this is why I need a jailbreak. This is why I want my iPad jailbroken, just because of these nifty tools out there such as InfiniDoc. So that's one great thing about jailbreaking. The other thing is uh, Steve at the iPad show. Uh, tuned me on to something uh, he just did recently to his iPad called Virtual Memory. And he enabled this a feature on his iPad. And it's a very, very geeky thing to do. So uh, Virtual Memory, if you search in Google for Virtual Memory iPad, you'll come up with iPod Touch forums where they explain how to do this. It's a very simple five minute process, I would say, to enable this. You download an app through Cydia called iFile and create a couple of, uh, two different files with some plists and things like that. But after you're all done, within five minutes it took me to do this on my iPad, this fixed and resolved all of the issues I had with running out of memory on my iPad. Many jailbreakers jailbreak because they want backgrounding or multitasking abilities. And this is something I did. I started backgrounding and apps would just crash because they run out of memory. And this happens on the iPhone too. So they just crash because they run out of memory because there's no official backgrounding way. So it's all done nicely. So memory would just go crazy and crash apps and RSS player is the biggest symptom of this or Pandora, the audio apps would crash and it was a big pain having the memory problems and I think this might be solved when we have 5, 12 megabytes of memory in the future iPads but right now uh, virtual memory is the way to go. So virtual memory has, it, I guess writes memory to RAM or I'm not sure how it all works but all I can say is I've been using it for the past 24 hours, no crashes, all of my apps run in the background, and when they're not used, they go in the virtual memory mode and free up the physical memory so apps don't crash, everything's reliable, the iPad's speedier, and all I have to say is virtual memory I've been blown away with. It's an incredible hack that is just another reason to jailbreak your iPad. So, away from the jailbreak stuff, on to iBooks. I've been using iBooks more and more and reading more and more. And iBooks, with this recent update, if you haven't updated, update the 1.1. It's a great update. And the killer feature here is really the sync. It's been working pretty well. I've been able to sync between my iPad and my iPhone, and my, actually my iPad and my iPod Touch. 
And it also works synchronizing across, you know, multiple iPads or multiple iPhones if you have the uh, OS 4 running on them. And I have to say the sync works really great. And some of the new like hidden features of it is you're able to turn on, when you click on fonts, turn on sepia mode. So you get rid of that white background. If you're trying to lower the brightness even more, you can use sepia mode. And they've added a new font, uh, Giorgio. So if you want that font, that's now added to it. And they've added some very cool things. You're able to sync notes across multiple devices. So say you're taking notes in your book, they now appear everywhere else. I really wish they'd add an export feature to get those notes out of your iBooks. But the it's a nice feature. You're able to bookmark uh, you know, multiple places now and a lot of great enhancements. So if you're not an iBooks user yet, I'd start. I'd recommend picking it up as an app and see if you like the experience reading. So uh, I've been enjoying it quite a bit, and I have to say I think you, you would too because it's just a killer app right now. Nothing quite like it. I know Kindle's trying to do their best to catch up to what Apple's doing, but uh, not quite the same thing. So uh, with that said, iPhone 4 was released today. I'm recording this on Thursday, uh, June 24th, and the iPhone 4 is now out for people to pick up and purchase. And the cool thing, how this relates to the iPad, is I watched some live footage from Leo the port, and they had someone come in that took apart an iPad and took apart the new iPhone 4. And he took a look at the internals of both the iPad 3G and the new iPhone 4. And the way Apple is designing this new iPhone is remarkably similar to the iPad internals. It's like an iPad now just a lot smaller. The old uh, designs internally were much different than the iPad was. So it's very cool seeing this new design, this new internal design, how the iPhone is very much like the iPad. And hopefully they'll learn some things from building these iPhones that they can incorporate, such as the Retina display, and some other things into the iPad. There's a lot of room to play with in the iPad, and hopefully they can learn something from this iPhone and apply it to the iPad. So iPhone 4 is out today, and I wish I could pick one up, but I just can't justify it. And uh, I'll probably get an iPhone 5 next year when those come out, but it'll be at least a year before I get a new iPhone. Uh, I'm looking forward to see what they add to the iPod Touch line and see if they actually rebrand that to the iPad Nano. So uh, I'm sure Apple has some stuff up their sleeves, and I'm just interested to see what happens in these next few months. And very interested to see when iPad 2 makes its way and see what that will have uh, in it. So that is uh, the iPhone 4. And with that said, I want to roll right into kind of feedback and all that kind of great things you can do for the show. So feedback is always welcomed at iPadPossibilities at gmail.com and 209-542-iPad. So call in, leave in your voicemail messages, and I love hearing from you. What shows, what episodes do you want me to talk about? And if you want to leave your own comments, I'd love to play them on the air and answer some questions or whatever you have on your mind tonight. So just send in your comments. I love hearing from you guys. And with that said, you can support the show in one of many ways. First off, you can become a premium member to the podcast. For only two bucks a month, uh, you get access to more episodes. You get access to early episodes, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You get access to the shows. And you also get ad-free versions of the podcast. And when I get developer promos, you get those first. You get the first opportunity at free applications. So... Become a premium member today by going to tppn.tv and clicking on the iPad premium page and find out all the information there. You can also support this podcast by purchasing the iPad Possibilities podcast app for $2.99 in the App Store. Get the shows Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and a video episode every now and again. And finally, reviews are greatly appreciated on the iTunes Store. And if you have something negative to say, I, I, I'm fine with that. Just send me an email as well so I can try to fix the problem because with the reviews, there is really no way 
for me to interact with you and try to alleviate whatever problem you may be having. So that's how you can support the show. And with that said, this is Tim Chatton with the iPad Possibilities Podcast. If you want to find out more information about this show and other shows, just go to tppn.tv. And until the Sunday night live episode, you can check that out at tppn.tv. Every Sunday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do the live show. So until then, this is Tim Chatton of the iPad Possibilities Podcast.